So if I am looking to grow a fencing business, what do you recommend from a marketing point of view? Where should I be spending my money on? What should I not be spending my money on? So if you're a fencing business and looking to grow, I would first and foremost start with SEO. Okay. And the reason why I'd start with SEO is mainly to do with making certain that I've got good branding as well online. So obviously I'd want to make certain that I've got an attractive looking site. So if anyone was to find out who I am and what I do, they could click through, check my accreditations and stuff like that. Uh, it's optimised for the keywords that I obviously want it to rank for in my local area and hopefully generating leads via search engine optimization. Right. What would you recommend for a fencing company starting out? They've, let's say they've got the website built with regards to SEO. So what, what I would be looking to do is targeting different services that you provide. So obviously there's different types of fencing. Um, some people might do like residential fencing. Others might be providing, let's say, farm fencing. Um, so making certain that you've got an SEO optimized page for every single. So, so on that, if you've got, let's say, like palisade fencing, bowl top fencing, playground fencing, sports fencing, rebound fencing, would you do a different page for every single one of those? Yeah, definitely. Because what, what, one thing that business owners get wrong is that they think just because they provide it as a service, they don't actually need to list it as an SEO optimized article on their website. But Google can't read your brain um, almost. So yeah. I would definitely be looking to build out dedicated pages for all, each of those and obviously making certain that all, everything gets searches and stuff. Go on. So on, on, the, on the next part? Facebook ads. Yeah. I def I'd definitely do Facebook ads. I think that Facebook ads would be a little bit touch and go in that industry. And well, the reason, the re I'd, I'd rephrase it. You're right, right? I would definitely do retargeting pixel yeah. on the website. So that means for anyone who's looking, that's been on the website, um, you put a retargeting pixel on there and then it can then track them on Instagram and on Facebook. If they've not inquired, you can then try to get them to go back. And on the retargeting pixel, you could show like case studies and testimonials because they might have thought, mm, I'm not really certain whether this fencing company is the right company for me to inquire with. She so wants to try and instill that trust. Yeah. But maybe you're right, maybe a cold Facebook ad might not work. So, where I think a cold Facebook ad would work is, obviously we live in the UK and sometimes we get some really bad, like windy season and like neighbours' fences get knocked over. As soon as you have like an incident like that and if you're doing residential fencing, it's it's prime opportunity to load up Facebook ads and spend maybe two, three, four hundred pounds in, in that specific yeah. week that could be for um, like damaged fencing yeah. fencing repair and stuff like that then there's other ways with regards to marketing strategies so if anyone hired a, a fractional cmo to for their fencing company they might speak to them about traditional advertising so that could be magazines tv ads radio ads billboard advertising mm. me personally i don't think you get much bang for your buck but what's your thoughts on traditional marketing I, th I think it works for, for certain industries. I ju I'm just not, uh, I, I just don't think it would work for fencing, um, if I'm yeah. being 100% honest. It's it's one of those industries where people would rather search for a fencing company if you have like a good di digital presence. So if you've got some nice before and after case study photos, if you've got nice reviews, testimonials, stuff like that will win over the client. I, I've... I, for one, have never listened to like a radio ad or seen a billboard and thought, actually, I need my fencing done. Yeah. Um, I don't know about yourself. No, yeah, no, definitely not. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that that's one that would work in this industry. Yeah, I think one that could work really well is PPC, pay-per-click. Yeah. But, again, it's, it's very expensive if you don't know what you're doing. So you need a, a specialist PPC expert to be running the account yeah. to make certain you're looking for the long-tail keywords, so if you was to do palisade fencing repair, that's quite a long tail. It's a it's a sub niche within fencing because it's palisade fencing, yeah. and then repair is like a modifier in a service that you do, not just installation of new fencing. Let's say, so if you did that and you converted those well, I would start running PPC on these long tail keywords, which is slightly cheaper per click, but can generate the inquiries. What's your thoughts on PPC? Because I know that you've heard of a lot of kind of bad stories where people have had bad click fraud and wasted a lot of money on PPC. 
Yeah, so my, my issue is with, with PPC, especially if, if you're a fencing company, like for example, you might be on the road, you're not looking at the actual PPC account, you've just not got the time in the day to do it, or you might be quoting up certain jobs. So first of all, I'd, I'd look to outsource it that somebody is actually in the ad account like a hawk. Um, and then second of all, like like what you mentioned, you still have the issues like click fraud. You need to make certain that your page is well designed for CRO. So when somebody is actually clicking through, you're enticing them to actually fill out the contact form. So you're getting that information because a lot of people just look at traffic, but you're, you want to turn that traffic into converted actual business for your company. Um, I, I, for one, I'm not a fan of PPC. I, I, I think it's a, a little bit too risky, um, especially if you're just starting out. There are a lot safer options, to say the least. I think that going with an actual lead generation company is a lot safer. Yeah, I mean, well, you, so over at fatrank.com, we've got a lead generation service for fencing companies where we actually guarantee them a return on investment. So Kaz was talking there that saying that PPC is quite risky, where what we try to do is completely de-risk it for any fencing business owners, and we'll generate the leads, and you only pay on a converted kind of job that you've won. But other lead generation companies can also be risky. So there's certain places like Bark or Checker Trade or Yellow Pages Advertising. Now, the, the issue, not to badmouth any other lead generation company, is that they might sell that same inquiry to five or six different fencing companies, which then means you're not getting exclusive leads, which then means it's a race to the bottom on price, yeah. where obviously at fatrank.com they'll give you exclusivity on the leads that come through and the real time leads as well. So, but we are quite selective with who we work with. So if someone just came to us and said, oh, we're a fencing company and we want leads, I'd say, look, I want to dig a little bit deeper into what type of fencing. Is it timber fencing? Is it, like you said, palisade fencing? Is it playground fencing? Is it security fencing? Like, have you got the right accreditations? Because a lot of things that we need to make certain that they're good at converting the fencing leads into orders and profit, which we only get paid when they actually start to make profit, which I think is a big part. But with regards to other lead generation companies, what's your thoughts? Like what you said, it's, it, it, for example, anyone can go and sign up to Yellow Pages Premium or Check a Trade or, or uh, Builder Builder, stuff like that, right? There, there is no... Um, there's not really a filtering process. So if, say, for example, a lead was generated in Manchester or London or wherever, um, anyone can essentially say, right, okay, well, I want that lead now. Um, and you are going up against four or five different competitors. So like what you said, that is the one issue with, with lead generation companies. Um, for me, I, I would be looking for a service like that where, for example, you are bespoke, you're very picky in, in who you work with. You, you don't just onboard anyone because a lot of, of fencing companies and a lot of just general companies, they, they don't know what they're doing, so they're just bidding in at random prices. So I, I, I think that actually vetting the lead generation company can help a lot as well. Yeah, for sure. I think one other thing that's very good for fencing companies to do as well, start to understand who your target audience is. So are you a manufacturer or supplier of fence panels that's looking to get specified? If you are, I would get yourself onto LinkedIn and I would specifically start filtering to look after architects and then try to connect with them and start passing your specifications through to the architect. However, if you're a playground company and you're doing the work mainly for councils, try to connect with park managers who are going to be giving those orders out. Or it could be that you mainly do work for landscaping companies. Go and connect on LinkedIn to every single one of those potential customers who could be giving you fencing leads as well. So that's another big part, I would say, that LinkedIn from social media could work really well if you're looking to grow your fencing company.